today? I'm doing well. Yeah. And how are things going in your classroom? They're a lot better than the last time we talked. I feel talked. I feel um, not that they were horrible, but I just feel a lot more confident and more competent in the classroom now. Great. And how's your relationship with your lead teacher? I know the last time we spoke, you felt like there was a disconnect between mm -hmm. your relationship as an aide and her being the lead and not really knowing what your role was and your routine. How's that going now that you kind of had a conversation to define what your role is? It's a lot better, and we even, like, I talk to my lead teacher, and I talk to my director, and so now me and my lead teacher meet for, like, it's not a lot of time, but, like, 30, 45 minutes during nap time once a week, so that she can tell me what she needs from me during the week and things like that. Like, I think the last time she was sort of expecting me, oh, excuse me, mm -hmm. expecting me to just sort of know what her lesson plan was and to meet the needs of it but now she tells me what she's doing why she's doing things and like what I can help her do to prepare and things like that so, right which yeah. probably helps with the challenging behaviors that you're having in the classroom yeah because I was just as surprised as the kids were sometimes that things were switching or that we were doing something different so now it's a lot but I feel like it's more smooth mm -hmm. you know we've talked about maybe preparing certain kids for the next activity that's coming up rather than just telling them it's time to stop you know, things like that. So that's helped. Right. No time is, or some time is better than no time, mm -hmm. right? Um, how about the challenging behaviors? Um, I know that you had said patience was a issue for mm -hmm. you and that you were working on your patience with dealing with children with temper tantrums. Mm -hmm. So we talked about calming down steps for those children that were throwing temper tantrums. Yeah. So I haven't been in the classroom yet, but what have you done so far? Well, I mean, first is I took your advice, too, with um, just sort of um, praising them for doing things correctly, you know, like, or not throwing t t temper tantrums and saying what they needed and what they wanted, just in, like, day-to-day -day interaction. So if they're like, Miss Ivy, what do you want? You know, um, can I please have some milk? And I'd be like, oh, that's a great job using your words. Of course, you can have some milk. So that sort of helped me um, when I started using the calming down steps because um, it allowed them to talk to me afterwards. So I guess the first thing we did tried is at first I liked your idea of like the temper um, tantrum corner or like the calming down corner. And so I put some tape on like our circle area and mm -hmm. I would have them sit there. But then, you know, they didn't really get what the tape was for. Or that they had to stay inside the tape and not outside the tape. And then I have like two kids who throw their bodies down when they're um, throwing a temper tantrum. And so I was kind of worried about them hurting themselves mm -hmm. if they're in the corner. And, you know, if they're being separated. And so I um, ended up getting, like, just a small ball pit that's padded. And I put, like, soft toys and um, pictures of families. Like, wh when we had our family unit, that's where I hung the pictures so that the kids can see things they recognize. So it seems to be going okay. Yeah. It seems to be going okay. So you hung the pictures up as far as their family goes mm -hmm. to, as a soothing technique. Mm -hmm. And you... Put, did you put some stuffed animals, some soft toys? Yeah. You said it was ball pit. It's the ball pit. So we put the stuffed animals, um, the puppets, mm -hmm. you know, so that they could kind of have something that they, more, that they could play with, you know, because the stuffed animals can be like a lot, you know, mm -hmm. for the smaller mm -hmm. kids. And then um, the soft books from the toddler room. So mm -hmm. um, I was kind of confused about whether or not that was age appropriate, but they seem to like really like looking at the pictures or rubbing it, like just, um, you know, things like that. So a lot of them, when they throw those tantrums, they have their lovies that they take in there with them, like mm -hmm. blankets or a stuff, special stuffed animal or something. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit more about when you're observing some of these challenging behaviors, because I know that you said that you really hadn't, figured out when really what's triggering the challenging mm -hmm. behaviors. Um, I know you talked about with your lead when she's doing um, group activity mm -hmm. or when your lead is sitting down with children doing snacks mm -hmm. and you're, you're passing out snacks mm -hmm. as the aid. When have you done any um, observation as far as what's triggering some of these challenging behaviors? I've noticed a lot of times, like ever since we talked about that, I was really curious about, you know, when that would happen in my classroom. And I noticed transition time especially the time between um like going outside in the morning which is like at 10 30 and then they have um they have lunch at like 11 15 and then I change diapers and they go down for a nap and so that chunk of time is very hectic a lot there's a lot of transitions a lot of changes and I think also too the kids get sleepy and so that was a huge time for challenging behavior a huge time for a lot of tantrum throwing and a lot of just inappropriate behavior like of one kid who loves to like put his cot over his body 
Mm. you know, before he goes to sleep and, like, just stuff like that where it's, like, not necessarily a temper tantrum, but they don't do things. And then I notice when I'm closing, because I don't close all the time, but when I am closing, after about 4 o'clock, the kids tend to get a little riled up. I think they're ready to go home. They're Mm -hmm. tired. They get hungry again, and they don't have another snack, you Mm -hmm. know. Um, So that sort of is a big one. And then we used to have a lot of tantrums in between any time we were moving activities so like if we were going from circle time to art you know or from like art to outside or to the bathroom mm-hmm. but now that you I took your suggestion and we give the kids five minute warnings that's mm-hmm. been a lot more smooth that's great because I think what was happening is that we were just like a kid's playing with a toy nicely and we had to tell him he has to put it down with no warning I think that would upset some of them absolutely absolutely and so your patience has kind of Ease down. Yeah. And now that I understand what's going on, like before, it's like, no, it's time to go outside and you love going outside. Why are you screaming at me right Mm -hmm. now versus saying, I told you five minutes and if when we go outside, um, one of the things I found too that some for some kids who have a hard time with transition, because there's two in particular in my classroom who just like don't deal with changing change well. And so um I started asking them what they're gonna do in the next activity. So then it gets them kind of excited for it. You know, so like we're going to go outside. Are you going to go down the slide? Are mm-hmm. you going to play on the bikes? You know, mm-hmm. and then they get more excited about that. So. so I hear you saying a few things that your patience has decreased because of the the, the skills that you've implemented in your yeah. room. You've observed kind of when those times are, those challenging times during mm-hmm. transitions. And you observe two children that have been probably that need closer observation. Yeah. And more like activities. You know, Mm -hmm. like, if there's any downtime, they're the ones who, like, throw toys across the room or wrestle when they shouldn't be wrestling or wear their cots as Superman capes, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Yeah, that would test my (laughs) face. So we talked about the calming down steps and the first step being the breathing techniques. Mm -hmm. And we talked about um, implementing some of those activities. Did you think about any activities to talk about breathing or introducing that to your children? It's been hard. I've been talking to my lead teacher about it and we did do this one activity with feathers Mm -hmm. but I'm having a hard time teaching them how to take the in breath Mm -hmm. you know to watch their breathing like I I use deep breathing exercises just like in my personal life but it's kind of hard to transfer that to like a two and a half three-year-old level Mm -hmm. so um we've done like blowing bubbles you know we've done some activities of like you know suck up all the air you can and blow it out as hard as you can and Mm -hmm. things like that but I don't I'm having a hard time transferring that into helping them calm down. Okay. So that's a great next step as far as a a goal in this, inside this goal um, of how to transfer that from you created this space where they Mm -hmm. can go and calm down when they have their temper tantrums. Next is introducing when you get into that corner, you need to take a deep breath. You need to breathe. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's how that would transfer into that space that we Mm -hmm. created and that first step. Okay. And then we can probably introduce the second step. Um, great. I know there's two other goals that we probably need to discuss, but it seems like this area, as far as your routine with mm-hmm. your, your teacher and getting the kids' um, challenging behaviors in order mm-hmm. in that space and transferring that breathing technique into making it adaptable yeah. into what is actually going on mm-hmm. in the classroom. I was thinking about, it was just at first me and my... Um, lead teacher were thinking about putting feathers in the ball pit that was just I don't know if that you know that be a choking hazard because that's what we used to get them to breathe and like we were t- talking about the wind and so we put feathers in a big bucket and mm-hmm. had them blow them out mm-hmm. but I don't want to clean that up all the time you know so I would say sticking with your ball pit and the stuffed animals and if they're going to get lovies mm-hmm. or blankets mm-hmm. to calm themselves down and you put the pictures up in that area, okay. I think that's enough. Okay. Um, how long are their temper tantrums? Have you observed any of that? You know, I, it's hard to say on average, but like they're not very long and they've gotten shorter now that I can... I kind of isolate them, and I think what was making them so long the last time is getting involved in, like, power struggles with them, you know? It was like, well, you need to stop, and then they got all this negative attention on them because me and my lead teacher, you know, are trying to get the kid to calm down, or he's going back and forth, mm-hmm. where now it's like, you know, you need to go sit over here, and you need to calm down, and when you're ready to come back and join us, then you can do that, 
and then we always check in within like two minute intervals with you know like are you all done and so I would say that I've only had to go back and check in probably like three or four times that's great so that's great yeah that's great well it seems like it's working for you yeah it seems nice so, okay. so um from here what I'll do is create another action step plan for us okay. and figure out what your next steps will be mm -hmm. and what my next steps will be. You kind of already vocalized what those next steps mm -hmm. will be for you, but I need to figure out what's going to be useful for me to help okay. you. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too.